Hi everybody, Mike Beer here with your Friday DRF race of the day. It's a good one, race number nine. Down at Oaklawn Park is the grade three fantasy stakes for three-year-old fillies going a mile and a 16th on the main track. A $400,000 purse, of course, Friday. Would have been Kentucky Oaks Day since they're not going to run that race at Churchill Downs. A lot of the top three-year-old fillies in the country have been rerouted here. Let's put up the slate for the field here. A, a big field of 14. And you just have to imagine that it's, uh, you know, all the, the top three old fillies in the country are well represented here. Um, once Oaklawn moved this race um, to the date of the originally scheduled Kentucky Oaks, um, pretty much everybody showed up here. So you have a, a very, very good race. We have a lot to get to. So let's um, get right to the Timeform U.S. pace projector if we can. Um, they are projecting a fast pace for this race with the number two and the morning line favorite, Venetian Harbor, who is two to one on the line, um, showing speed. Um, that's to be expected. She has a great draw. She's two for two on dirt, and she's used her speed, obviously, very effectively in those races. The four, Lake Avenue, also up there on the pace, and she is a speed horse. They did not use her speed um, last time in the grade two Gulfstream Park Oaks. It really cost them in that race. I think they will go back to using speed. Um, in this race, as Johnny Velasquez takes over um, the riding uh, for Bill Mott, number 10 British Idiom is up close to the pace on the pace projector. We'll see where she ultimately lands. She's a two-time grade one winner with both of those races, uh, both of those wins coming from off the pace, and I expect her to be off the pace in this race, especially if they go fast. Uh, but she can get any kind of a trip in a race. It's a very good field. Um, let's kick off the analysis with the horse down on the rail, Ice Princess, a New York bred for Danny Gargan. She's three for four lifetime. Um, we have a replay of her most recent win. This is back at the end of February at Aqueduct. It's the Maddie May Stakes against uh, fellow New York breds. And just the field of horses, she's too good. Um, she's too good for this field. She's two to five. She set a nice trip sort of in behind um, horses for most of the trip here. Um, she got clear at the top of the stretch. Uh, Manny Franco, who was riding that day, set her down. She wins very easily. Too good for that field. Um, it's a tougher spot here, obviously. Her running style fits the expected flow of this race well because she's going to be well off the pace in here. She likes to sit it out and sort of make one run. Um, we'll see if she can improve. It's worth noting that she's also cross-centered into the Gardenia, which is race number eight at Oakland on Friday. That's an easier spot for Ice Princess if they elect to run there, but I wouldn't be surprised if they take a shot in here. She'll be a big price, and she can come running late maybe for a piece in here. The number two is Venetian Harbor. She's your morning line favorite. It's easy to see why um, everything is right there for you on paper. Two starts on dirt so far in her career. Both of them very, very easy and convincing wins with buyers of 92 and 94. They are the two fastest races any horse has ever run in this field. Um, and it just makes her a real handful. And here is a replay of her grade two win, the Las Virgenes, uh, last time at Santa Anita, early February this race is. It's right off a maiden win, first time around two turns. Um, and the race was really never in doubt. She cleared right to the front in here, controlled the pace under a good hold the entire way. And when she was asked coming to the stretch, just moved away from that field and was ridden out to the finish. Um, she's been very impressive on dirt. Um, she did not beat a good field in that last for Genis. There were only four others in there. She had them really over a barrel. This is a much tougher spot. And obviously a faster pace could make things much more difficult for her as she goes a mile and a 16th for the first time. But there's just no knocking her, her two races. She looked really good winning. She seems to have a, a real good amount of talent. Um, and she's a horse who's just really hard to dismiss in here. If they make her go fast early, maybe it really works against her. But um, I am not doubting her talent at this point. The number three is Swiss Skydiver. Um, she is coming off an upset win at the Grade 2 Gulfstream Park Oaks over this distance. Let's put up a replay of that right now. You'll watch her. She's been on the lead the entire way. They just uh, they let her clear to the front. They did not challenge her up the backstretch. And she had plenty left um, in the stretch after she was allowed to rate that pace. I think it's also worth watching uh, the number four in this replay, Lake Avenue, because she is the horse um, who's rallying there in the blue silk. She, they took her off the pace and there really worked against her. I thought she finished very gamely for second without threat to Swiss Skydiver. I'll say this about Swiss Skydiver. I'm a fan of hers. I like pretty much every race that she's run so far in her career. And, you know, even though she was a big price when she won that Gulfstream Park Oaks, um, it's not like it was a big surprise that she won. She's a talented horse. Um, and she earned a 90 buyer speed figure for that win as well. But she was a very square price in that race, and she just had all the best of it on a really slow pace. This race will be run, you know, in a much different, uh, you know, manner as far as the pace is concerned. Not that that works against her. She can sit off the pace and still run well. Just sort of feels like last time might have been the time to have Swiss Skydiver. The number four, Lake Avenue. She's shown a lot of talent, a tap at Philly, homebred. Um, by Godolph, uh, for Godolphin, she's out of a great, a multiple grade one winning dirt router 
in seventh street so she has all the pedigree and she has the form as well she was a good two-year-old vermont um blowing out uh, maidens at aqueduct by over 12 lengths with an 83 buyer coming right back and wiring the demoiselle at a mile and an eighth in her final start as a two-year-old um, her first two starts so far at three, um, you know, maybe they, they just haven't been quite as good. Her busher was a real disappointment off the layoff. I thought on uh, on that day at Aqueduct, March 7th, that you maybe didn't want to, want to be on the rail, and she was on the rail cutting that pace. Maybe that's something of an excuse for her, but she was bad in that race. Um, she came back in that Gulf Street Park Oaks we just took a look at, and I actually thought she rebounded very nicely. Um, they decided to rate her in that race. She got in a little bit of traffic early, was in among horses for a long way. When she got clear around the second turn, um, she chased the leaders. I thought she actually finished gamely in there to just miss getting second, even though she was no threat to win it. Um, I did think it was a step in the right direction. I think it shows that she can still run. I think it makes her a dangerous horse in here. She is a horse um, who's 15 to one on the morning line. If you can get a price like that on her, um, I would not dismiss her too lightly. The number five is a stable mate of Lake Avenue's trained by Bill Mott, Harvey's Lil Goyle. Um, American Pharaoh Philly, um, but there's a lot of dirt. The American Pharaohs have been very good on turf, um, but this horse has two big wins on the main track since Bill Mott switched her over, and she has a ton of pedigree on the bottom via dirt horse. Her unraced dam, a half sister to I'll Have Another, of course, a Derby and Preakness winner, as well as multiple graded stakes winning Golden Award, um, who Mott also trains. So there's a lot of dirt pedigree, and she's just been really, really impressive um, in her two dirt wins. We'll have a we'll show the replay right now of her Busanda. This is. Back in early February at Aqueduct, going a mile and an eighth, she did not break well in this race at all. Away last and raided off the pace by Junior Alvarado, who was riding the thing, and just kept wide all the way throughout the running. But, um, boy, she made a big run um, to come up to contention around the second turn. You saw her there on the stretch take over with no trouble at all, and she was in hand under the wire. Really impressive win, backing up a really impressive day, uh, day, dirt debut win prior to that. Um, her form is, is really, really good as a two-year-old. And, you know, I know it's a little bit of layoff here, but you don't worry so much about Mott off of layoffs. She looks like one of the, perhaps one of the better um, three-year-old fillies in this division. I, I would be willing to give her a chance to, to run with these horses, even uh, with the layoff in play here. She's a good price on the line as well, a 12 to one. The six is Kansas Kiss. Um, you know, this horse is actually okay. Improving from race to race for Ray Handel um, was very green early in her career, but she has slowly been putting things together. She's probably still too slow to be considered a major factor in here, but her um, busher last time was actually a very good effort. We have a replay of that right now, um, and we're going to pick it up in the stretch here. This is after she has already made a move um, to challenge Lake Avenue on the lead, take this race over through the turn. You see her on a clear lead in the stretch. She cannot hold on at the end. She's just going to get nailed at the wire um, by Water White, who's also a, a fairly talented filly. Um, it, it was a, just a really good try and a really good effort for Kansas Kiss. Another step in the right direction for her, and she can sit off the pace and run, and that's a good thing the way this race projects to run. Um, she's going to be a big price in here, but she's going to have to take another step forward in this race. I'm a fan of hers as well. I think um, she's an interesting horse, maybe, maybe down the line, maybe not in this race, but she's pretty good and she ran well last time. The seven is She Dares the Devil for Brad Cox. Um, not anything to really knock on her, her as far as her two starts this year um, are, are concerned so far. These are her first two starts for Brad Cox. Um, the allowance race, two starts back off the layoff. She uh, moved first into a wicked pace in that race, took it over, got tired at the end, and was run down by a stablemate of hers, Bonnie South, who came back to win a graded stakes race in her next start. Um, and then this race here uh, for, for She Dares the Devil. This is the grade three Honey Bee right here at Oakland over this same distance of a mile and a 16th. She got a really good trip in this race, raided right in behind the leads over, leaders over to the inside, just kept up all the way. You see her sort of in behind there on the upper stretch looking for some room, but she is going to get it, get a split there, come into about the 16th pole very gamely from there to take over and win. Um, it's not a big margin of victory over a horse who's also back in this field, um, but she won that race you know, much easier than it looks, I think, and was much the best in there. Nice performance, picks up Joel Rosario for this. Another horse who probably has to improve to win here, but uh, very lightly raced three-year-old, and this is the time of year for these horses to be taking a step forward. The eight is ringleader, a big uh, long shot in here, um, stretching back out off of a disappointing effort in the slop last time. They went long with her once. That was two starts back in that honeybee that we just watched. She cut the pace. It was no match, and she's in very tough in this race, especially if the pace is fast. Lady Glamour um, is the number nine, and listen, she's going to be a very, very big price in this race. I'm not knocking 50 to one shots, especially 
um, for a filly who's been stakes placed three times already in her career. She hasn't come close to winning any of those races, but hit the board in three stakes already. Um, they tried to cut her back to sprint in her three-year-old debut last time, the sloppy track in the Purple Martin stakes, and she was nowhere. Um, I don't want to really hold that race against her. She stretches back out in this race. Um, just an interesting formulator fact to note here for her trainer, Kenny Smith, who does a really good job. Um, you know, and this is, you know, sort of food for thought for us. There's going to be a huge price in this race. But Kenny Smith, over the past five years with three-year-olds on dirt, making their second start off of a layoff similar to this one, a bid seven for 13, 54% winners, 652 ROI, something to think about. Uh, maybe if you wanted to try to throw her in there somewhere underneath at a huge price in this race. The 10 is British Idiom, your two-year-old uh, champion from 2019 after winning all three starts, including the Grade 1 Alcibiades, including the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, both of those races at this distance. And she did it from off the pace both times. That's a good thing for this race. She returned for a three-year-old debut mid-February at the fairgrounds in the Grade 2 Rachel Alexandra. And listen, she was only second best to Finite in there. Um, I thought all in all, it, w it was a pretty good three-year-old debut. It's not the kind of thing that's going to you know, blow you away when you watch it, but didn't break that great in that race, had to steady a little bit as they headed to the first turn. And then she just followed Finite, the eventual winner of that race around the track. Couldn't really get to her, was never a threat in the stretch. Um, I thought she raced on gamely, though, to the end and was clear in second by the time they got to the wire. I thought it was an okay performance, um, especially if you just want to look at it as a jumping off point um, for a three-year-old campaign. I'm expecting her to run better in this race. I'm not suggesting I would take any kind of really short price on her in the wind pool, but she's just a horse. I, I, I think she's going to run better in here, and I want to use her in this race, short price or not. The 11 is Fire Coral. Um, for Steve Asmussen, this is a, a, another very lightly raced three-year-old. She's two for two so far since she's come back from the layoff as a three-year-old. Both of those wins over this track and trip here. We have a replay of her most recent one, um, this back on March 12th. Um, and in this race, they just put her on the front. She had an inside draw. They, she secured the rail as they headed for the first and then just sort of went on with it. Uh, made the pace tracked by the runner-up in that race all the way, and it was just too good for that horse in the stretch. Held her off and was getting away at the end. I, I thought she ran well. Her effort two starts back is maybe one you want to take a look at, even though it was only against Maidens because she did it from off the pace that day. Um, and I just liked the way that she was finishing in that race. Stayed very gamely to the end, and it felt like she was getting stronger at the end of that race, and that could bode well for her here as she goes um, this two-turn uh, mile and a 16 for the third time in her career. She's a very well-bred curling filly. Um, she has a lot of upside for Asmussen. She is obviously going to have to improve in here, but I don't see why she can't do that. She could be interesting at a, at a big price in this race, even though I don't love her. The number 12 is New York Groove for Michael Trombetta. This is going to be her dirt debut. It's her second start so far as a three-year-old. We'll put up a replay of her winning um, her, for the fourth time. She went four for four as a two-year-old, and this is the glorious song at Woodbine going seven furlongs. Um, set a nice trip right up on the pace in this race. Um, as, a, as a very heavy favorite, took over with ease and won this race very convincingly. She showed a lot of quality as a two-year-old. None of those races were on dirt. They were all synthetic races, um, but she showed some quality, won those races easily. I feel like she does have some talent. Her first start this year was at Tampa in the grade three Florida Oaks on turf, and she did not run well in a race that was one wire to wire. She wound up finishing 12th and last that day. But, you know, listen, maybe she's just not a turf horse. She's second off the layoff here, but she has a lot to prove on dirt at a big price to 13 is Lazy Daisy, um, sh shipping in for trainer Doug O'Neill. This is going to be her three-year-old debut. She did not draw a good post in here. Um, if you go back to her races as a two-year-old, um, she won first time out, sprinting at Del Mar, um, two starts later in her first ever dirt route attempt. She won the grade two Pocahontas um, with a 77 buyer speed figure. Um, it's not a, the Pocahontas is just not a race that I, that I like all that much. The pace really held together in there. She was right up there on the lead all the way with the runner-up, His Glory. Another horse who I'm just not much of a fan of. I just don't think she's that good. Um, they went 1-2 around the track. The closers never got involved. So in some ways, I thought Lazy Daisy took advantage, even though it was only her third career start. And, it, you know, it was a grade two win around two turns. She was nowhere in the Breeders' Cup. You don't have to hold that race against her, but she clearly has to take a significant step forward here in her three-year-old debut. And she's got to do it um, from off the pace. And she's got to do it off the layoff as well. The 14 is um, Alta's Award, another Steve Asmussen trainee. Another horse that really hasn't done anything wrong in her career. She won her first two um, route attempts at the fairgrounds over the winter. Thought she ran okay in those races. Um, just got up at the end, two starts back 
in an allowance race. You know, it was a, I'll say it was a game win um, with a paired up 78 buyer speed figure that she had earned breaking her maiden. They ran her in the Honey Bee last time. She finished very close with She Dares the Devil in there. I thought she got a good trip. I mean, she was wider. She Dares the Devil sat in behind the lead. Elta's award basically got a three ride, three wide trip around the track. She was game. She forged on to get a very short lead in the stretch. And she just couldn't really finish with She Dares the Devil late. Not a bad performance, but it also wasn't one that made me really want to better in this field, especially from post 14. But she'll be a big price as well um, if you want to take a shot with her. This is an excellent, excellent running of the fantasy. A lot of different ways to go. We'll put the picks up there. Um, I am going to go with Harvey's Little Goyle uh, for, for Belmont, especially if she's going to be, you know, around that morning line price. We'll see how the, the wagering all shakes out. But I was, you know, pretty taken with her two starts on, on dirt. Um, for, for Belmont earlier on in her career. She's off a little bit of a layoff here, but um, really like the way she ran in those races. If she's going to be a price, I'm just going to take her in here. Um, and I'm also going to use a lot of British Idiom. I thought her three-year-old uh, debut uh, back in February, I thought that was an okay effort. I think she can take a step forward off of that. I'm not way against Venetian Harbor, um, but if she's going to be a very short price in here, I just feel like it, it's, you know, I'm sort of obligated to take a, a shot against her with a better price. And for me, that's going to be the five Harvey's little goal. I went 5, 10, 2, and 4 in the grade three fantasy. It is an excellent race, and it's your Friday race of the day, the ninth at Oaklawn Park, approximate post time, 5.09 Central Time. Good luck.